Number two. Sailor Moon slash Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. I'll give you a moment. You can what the fuck all you want. Go ahead. Alright, you done? Okay. Let me explain myself. <laughs> um, the reason why this is on here is because it probably has one of the richest mythologies out of any work of fiction created during my lifetime. And... I say that knowing full well that TNG was created in my lifetime, the revised Doctor Who was created in my lifetime, but Doctor Who kind of gets written off because it was back in the 60s. But I'm not, I'm not even going to try to justify the statement, you're just going to have to sit with it because it, it's just beautiful how they create this world that's interwoven into the real world and it's about these five very unique personalities that have to juggle being superheroes with being real people and the gigantic background that they set up for it, the, the fantasy based background of them being interstellar princesses and stuff, it, there, there's just something captivating about it when it first came on I was I was very very young and it would come on just before we all went to school so everybody in school was able to catch it and then we'd go into school and, and it was the only thing on in the time slot and we all complained about how much we hated it, it was, stupid, you know, girl stuff, and stupid Japan, blah, 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 and then, on the other hand, I was in front of my TV every goddamn morning watching this show. All the characters are just identifiable. You, you see them. You see their emotions. You know where they're coming from. You understand their backgrounds as, as it's developed along the way, and when they, th you know, especially in the first story arc, where they completely turn it on its head by saying, Oh, you're not just superheroes, you're reincarnated celestial princesses. How do you react to that? So, from an audience standpoint, I didn't know anything about Sailor Moon going into Sailor Moon. I'm like, What the fuck? You know, they kept on saying, We gotta find a moon princess, we gotta find a moon princess. And you know, Usagi's the moon princess, but you didn't know that. It, it, it was on a scale of that, like basically, you saw the destruction of your entire civilization and your mother with her dying breath sent you into the future so you could try to have a normal life, but no, that's not going to happen, so you got to become a superhero and save the rest of humanity. That's good. I like that. I don't care if it's a girl's thing. That is cool. That is heavy. That has weight. And it adds a fantasy element that at the time I never even was, you know, it was almost taboo for me. Because once again, um, living in, you know, or, you know, at the time still being in that Christian school, the idea of reincarnation was completely taboo. Nobody was being reincarnated. That was, that was just blasphemy. But here's this idea of reincarnation presented to me. And it's just like, wow, you know, and it, that was the first time that, you know, a, an alien idea was accepted by me in a storytelling technique. And it was just done so well. And then, of course, about 10 years later, they did Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon, which a lot of people are kind of torn on. You know, they don't like the fact that it basically had no budget and the production values on it were terrible. But for me, it really, really won points because it was a great execution of the first story arc. Um, now, the first story arc has been told, retold like four different ways in like the manga, the anime, the musical, and in the live action. And I haven't read the, uh, the manga and I haven't watched the, uh, the musicals. Uh, so I only have the anime to go off of, but the live action is just great storytelling because they got rid of all of the filler episodes and just gave you this continuing narrative where the characters are constantly evolving and it's not just the girls, it's the shit in row, they're all well developed, all the, all the characters just have this rich backstory and, and you're seeing them on screen at any given point in time is just such a delight because you want to see more relevation in their plot you know and all the different subplots that are going on in it that just carry on for episodes it's just such a treat to see them unfold it's just 
really captivating to see to see these you know these things happen to these girls and it's just a lot of fun to watch now the reason why this is higher than Cowboy Bebop is for all the things I just said but the reason why I say it's not better than Cowboy Bebop is because as an anime it's really really flawed there's a lot of filler episodes that the show can just do without the cutie factor of it is something I could do without the obsessive Chippery J-pop and you know, all the characters singing and stuff like that. And, you know, that, that's too girly for me. I do have my limitations, so that, that that's something a little too girly for me. But it, it, the anime really, really hit a sour chord with me when once you get past Prince of Diamond, there's a lot less of a focus on the other four girls. Um, and they start to really push them out of the way to make room for new characters like Chibiusa, like Neptune, like Saturn, like Uranus. And I didn't like that. I really didn't like that because you spent all this time developing those five girls. Why do we need new characters? Why are they being pushed to the side for these new characters? I mean, like, yeah, they have a couple episodes here and there. But it really was disheartening to me to see these characters that for seasons I grew to love be pushed aside and that really didn't sit well with me so that's why you know Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon to me is a better show because it's just the first story arc it's just the five girls and there's, there's, you, you get attached to them their stories are just great and you you you, you, you see their weaknesses but you understand them and the writing is just beautiful in it for all the shortcomings that the production has the writing is fantastic but once again it kind of veers off into being too cute you know the, the fucking annoying Sailor V song throughout the whole thing and um the I can I can I can I can live with you know stuffed animal Luna I can't live with human Luna and the, you know there were, there were some times where you know it, it kind of went off the deep end, like the boot camp episode. Uh, it, you know, it, it still has its flaws. They both have their flaws, but for the story, the core story that's presented and the core characters that are presented, it's absolutely fascinating. And I love, I love these characters. They're just they're just great characters. <laughs> Number one, very few of you are, are going to see this one coming, very few of you, you're probably expecting some kind of stupid comedy or something like that, or you know, some kind of science fiction thing, no. Number one is Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad right now has me so captivated. It was initially introduced to me last year, just before the start of the summer, uh, because a friend of mine is like, you have to watch this. You have to watch this. Here's the Blu-ray of the first season. Just watch the first episode. Just watch the first episode. Whatever you do after that, okay. And I'm like, whatever. You know, I, I really wasn't too much into watching TV at the time. and um, He gave it to me on Blu-ray, and I didn't bring my Blu-ray player down to Jersey with me that summer. So I came back, and he was on me about watching. I'm like, fine, I'll watch. First episode, I was... Hooked. I watched the entire series in almost a week because you just want to go to the next episode constantly. You getting a one-hour segment of the story is just not enough. The you know it constantly has you on edge. It constantly has you biting your nails. The show, its characters is so well executed. This is a flawless TV show. The cinematography, the writing, it's all perfectly paced. It's just so nail-biting and on edge about how these characters are going to get out of this situation. And you really feel for all of them. You see both sides of all the characters. Like, you know, Jesse's a prick. He's a fucking dick, but he has morals. And you really start to feel with him, especially, you know, season four right now. You really, really feel for Jesse, and he's, a, you know, he's, 
Yo, he's this wigger, and I hate wiggers, they're so annoying, but Jesse is just such a captivating character. He has his own morals. He hates it when, you know, uh, the meth business gets brought to kids. Um, he really, you know, has a sense of loyalty to Walt, and, you know, seeing them go through all these trials and tribulations together, Walt and Jesse, it's brilliant. It's just fucking brilliant. It, it, and... I can't think of any show on TV that comes anywhere close to the acting, the camera work, the, you know, everything about this show. It's just a perfect show. Just watch it for, it's on Netflix right now. I beg everybody out there, watch the first episode. You will not be able to finish it until you are done. You've watched all the episodes you can. And it just... I can't give away anything about this show. If you haven't seen it, you have to because it, it, it just naturally escalates. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it just... The, you know, the, the side characters, everything about the show is interesting. It's just like, it's just like, you know, like the subplots of Pretty Guardian. You know, every character has their own plot and every time they step on screen, you're just... You're excited to see the resolution of what happened before, or you know, see it continue, and you know, to see that plot progress just a little bit. There's no characters in this show that are annoying. There's no missteps. It's, you know, it might be subject matter that other people find very, very difficult or can't get around, but you just gotta watch this show. I can't recommend it enough. It is, this is the perfect example of writing directing, you know, story planning, cinematography, acting, all coming together in this perfect package that is Breaking Bad. That's my favorite show of all time at the moment. You know, if you would have asked me to do this five years ago, this would be a completely different list. Five years from now, it will probably be a completely different list. But that's my favorite TV shows of all time. And, uh... Let me know what you think if you have your own top 10 that you wish to share with us um, or you want to talk about any of the shows that I just talked about, especially, you know, I know people are probably going to have something to say about the Doctor Who season finales. Um, head on over to a forum, tamreality.net slash forum. Uh, love to hear from you.